Hall. The Board of County Commissioners regular meeting will um, convene October 5th, 2021, 9.30. If we could start with the invocation by Pastor Bruce Ryder. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for uh, allowing us to have rest last night. Thank you for this day that you've given us. Help us to have wisdom. We ask for wisdom for this meeting today. We pray that you would give them humility, unity, and a sense of uh, hearing and communication that can only come from you. We pray, God, that you would be honored today. We thank you for their families, for all the staff, and everybody who works in this building. And we pray for your protection and for your leadership and your guidance in our lives. Remind us all how much you love us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Print the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Pastor. Next, we'll go into the ceremony presentations. Mr. Pendergrass. Thank you, Chairman. If I could have Karen and Pablo come up. We have a special guest in the audience this morning. His name is Ransom, and he's an adorable little beagle mix, and uh, he's looking for a good home. And uh, Karen can maybe give us updates what's going on this month in uh, animal services. And Good morning. Thanks for having us, as always. It is National Adopt-A-Shelter Dog Month with the ASPCA, so we're celebrating by having Dogtober this month. So you can adopt any shelter dog at our shelter for $30 this month with an approved application. Um, so he is available today. He's four months old um, and looking quite dapper, I must say. Matches Pablo. Um, I set that up for us. You know. And we have 40, almost 50 dogs available today. So wow. every shape, size, you can imagine, come on out. And cats are $10. And as always, adopt one, get a feline friend for free. So... Um, come on out. We have everything. Well, I'm sure the not young sure if we have like, bunnies. I'm sure like the young ones like Bronson here goes really fast, but we have some yes. out there. So hopefully somebody will make that be a great holiday Absolutely. gift for somebody this year. Yep, definitely. Thank you for everything. Thank you all your staff for everything you do out there too. For Thank the you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. No problem. Um, Look, buddy. He is adorable. He is very, <laughs> very playful. That's awesome. <laughs> there you go, Robert. All right, Let's go, Robert. Yay, fan of daddy. <laughs> so if, if sure, <laughs> so if Charlotte couldn't see that, um, right. Robert found a new pet to bring. Robert, where'd you go? The kids would love, love that dog. <laughs> the girls would love it. Thank you again, Karen. Chairman. Yes, thank you. Appreciate it. The next item is going to be introduced by Commissioner Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have a really special presentation, and this is a presentation uh, being made to us this morning. So I'd like to call up the group from the Southwest Florida 1013 Club. Uh, that would be uh, Joseph Andajar from the Lee County Sheriff's Office, Fort Myers Fire Chief Tracy McMillian, uh, Neil O'Connor, an NYPD Sergeant Retired, and Brian Sheehan, NYPD Sergeant Retired. If y'all will join us at the podium, and uh, we thank you very much for joining us this morning. Well, thank you for having us, distinguished members. Um, as a representative of the 1013 Club, I'm, I'm uh, also a f former first responder and survivor of 9-11, so this means a great deal to me, so forgive me for my getting emotional. I want to thank you guys for supporting uh, first responders and, and, and whole. Um, this flag um, is just a small portion of our thanks for you, the commissioners, allowing us to put on a presentation with the help of uh, uh, Chief McMillan, who uh, chaired the um, and organized the committee in order for us to put on the 20th anniversary um, just down the street. This flag was flown over Ground Zero on September 1st in commemoration of the 20th anniversary. And so we wish to present it to you. Great, thank you. If you'd come present it to our chairman. Thank you very much. 
appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you. My pleasure. Mr. Ryan, we'll get further. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Great. You want to open gentlemen hold it get front and center in the in the picture that'd be great thank you Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate uh, all your work. Um, I certainly was a volunteer up at 9-11 uh, when that occurred. Um, my uncle was chief of police back in the 70s and 80s, so I understand that and was up for the 20th anniversary, so it was part of her ceremony, so it, it always hits near and dear to my heart. So thank you very much. Um, underneath the recap, um, I'm going to bring up FEMA risk rating 2.0 um, on the commissioner comments, but I just wanted to put that on the record. Um, as far as that's concerned, and then we can move over to consent agenda items. Um, any items the commissioners like to pull? I have none, Mr. Chairman. I have none. None. Okay. With that in mind, can I entertain a motion? I'll move the balance of the consent agenda items. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Any public comment? Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Any discussion? Any opposition? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Next, we'll go to the administrative agenda. Sorry, we're moving a little quicker, Roger. <laughs> moving a little quick for me this morning. Uh, uh, good morning, commissioners. Thank you very much. Um, uh, administrative item number one is transfer of operation and maintenance and deed uh, of the city of Palms to the city of Fort Myers. Would ask Mr. Harner to present the item, please. Thank you, Roger. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, today, if you approve this item, this will turn the uh, stadium over to the city of Fort Myers. We have agreed to hold the a million dollars, up to a million dollars for demolition for one year. If the city does not get back to us within that year, that money will no longer be available for the demo or for any other purpose for the city. Um, we are, if you agree today, the facility turns over today after the agreement is signed. Um, we have given them up to the 15th to turn over the electric and the water for the facility. And last night, the city approved this item as well. I'd be happy to make that motion to approve the item. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any public comment? See none, I'll close public comment. Any other discussion? Mr. Chairman, no, I'll, I'll support the motion as well. I, I think this just makes a lot of sense. When you look at the amount, we're spending about a half million dollars a year on maintenance to maintain this facility. We're only getting, I think, about $32,000 or something like that back in revenue. So I know if the city, uh, may, they may not have firm plans right now, but if they've got some plans, it seems to make sense for us to give it back to them uh, so they can do that. I agree with your comments, Commissioner. At least any other discussion, any opposition, motion carries unanimously. Item number two. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would ask Ms. Brady to uh, present to you the collective bargaining agreement with local 1826 IAFF. Good morning, Commissioners. Christine Brady. This item is to approve the collective bargaining agreement with 1826, which represents our EMTs and paramedics. Uh, we've gone through a negotiation proce process with the union. I uh, want to take a moment to acknowledge uh, that we have a lot of folks in the audience from 1826 who are here to support. Um, it was a very collaborative process, and I uh, want to extend my thanks for, uh, for going through that. Um, the vote was ratified by the, uh, the union by a vote of 136 to 4. Uh, your ratification of this uh, at this time then seals uh, that contract for a number, uh, for uh, a, a period of three years. Thank you. Any questions? No. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve it, though. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any public comment? Yes, sir. I'm Eric Roberts, District Vice President of Local 1826. That represents the EMTs and paramedics of Lee County. We just let, um, the union would like to thank the board, thank county management for the hard work that went into this. It definitely addresses many of the challenges and issues that we have been seeing on the road and takes care of those for the next three years. I'd like to thank you. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all your service to the men and women. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. Get some rest. Thank you. <laughs> uh, any other public comment? Yes, ma'am. On the union contract. Good morning. My name is Jasmine Miller, JD. I am not sure if you're going to help the bus drivers, but they need a pay raise. They maneuver these huge buses throughout these narrow roads, and if it wasn't for them, sometimes the homeless people would be really, really um, uh, without help. Thank you, and have a good day. Any other public comment? Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Any other discussion? Any opposition? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Chairman, if I could, if I could yeah. I'm sorry. We, uh, during the consent, we have Tommy Dole here this morning from the elections office. I want to recognize Tommy Dole for being here, and that consent item gave his office a good boost out in East Lee County for that new expansion. So congratulations, Tommy, in your office. Sorry. No problem. Happy to acknowledge the wonderful supervisor elections. Thank you, Mr. Doyle. Item number three. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item number three, we are uh, requesting you approve replacing Leetran Route 150 with mobility on demand service. And we'd ask Mr. Uh, Cody to present the item, please. Good morning, Commissioners. Robert Cody, Leetran. First and foremost, I want to thank you. This enhancement to the Route 150 extends our services three quarters of a mile beyond what we were currently doing down in Bonita Springs. This will allow for more accessible, safe, and available transportation for this area. It also allows for us to scale should the growth and the demand call for it. It's a great service, it's used nationwide, and this is our pilot area, Bonita Springs, with our mobility on demand, and we've already branded it the Ultra because it's an Ultra service. Mr. Chairman, if I may, sure. I'm excited about the Ultra. Uh, thank you very much for bringing this idea forward. Um, so this is a, a pilot project, something that we're gonna try out. W when folks, um, They'll schedule their ride on an Uber type app on, on Uber itself, right? Yes, sir. And then um, will they get picked up and will they be the only ones on the bus or how many people will be on the van? No, it'll be a shared ride service similar to Uber with their Uber X where they have shared ride. Um, the service will only be a dollar fifty cents. So when it comes up under the Uber app, you'll see the cost of all the Uber vehicles and then you'll see the cost of our ultra system, which is a dollar fifty. So it's a shared ride system up to 15 passengers per unit. Does the does the software actually tell the driver what what order to pick everybody up in, or how does that? Correct. Work? It's based on their location and their first pickup. So it'll be a track. If you see the the yellow area, it can be anywhere in that area based on a person's destination. It will be designed how they will be picked up, and that they'll also be able to track the vehicle, similar to what you do on Uber app, where you track track rather how far and what time that bus is scheduled to arrive. Good deal. And um, just, I guess, my final question is, uh, so, so people who live along this, I guess, uh, yellow highlighted area, do they have to do anything special or will, when we launch this, I think November is when we're targeting to launch this, when we launch this, will it just uh, appear and work in their Uber app? How does it work? Yes, our anticipated start date is January. Oh, January. Okay. So that'll give us enough time to get out into the community to, to educate people on how to utilize the service. It'll be six ways to pay, so they don't af actually have to use the Uber app. They can actually call us okay. and uh, schedule a trip. So it, it's multifaceted, and we'll be on the grounds starting next week in Bonita Springs. We were waiting until approval before we put the boots on the ground. Excellent. Thanks, Rob. Mr. Chairman, additional comment. I worked in a number of different cities. And it's, it's interesting to look at Uber and Lyft have changed the dynamics of transportation. And I think the modeling for this uh, falls in line with that. And I think it's going to be a great flexibility to our constituents. And I thank you for the hard work and anxious to have its employed. And you got a new pet out of it, too. <laughs> <laughs> I move the item. Second. I, I think and as a reward, we've got this puppy that needs a home. That's right. You seem to really like Robert. I, Part of the motion. Uh, I already, I already called, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I have a motion and a second. Any public comment? Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Any other discussion? Seeing now, none. You know, the only thing we also, I didn't mention is uh, the cost savings to the county is pretty dramatic on this, too. Uh, I guess typically we're spending about $600,000 to run the fixed right. route. This is going to be more around three hundred thousand dollars, so it cuts the cost in half to the county. So, better service for the riders, and it cuts the cost in half. I hope this pilot project works out. So do I. 
Um, any other discussion? Is there a motion, a second on the floor, any opposition? Seeing none, motion carries unanimously. Item number four. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item number four, we are requesting that you approve the funding agreement with Florida Department of Transportation for Littleton, Littleton Road widening project. Ask Mr. Searchy to present the item, please. Good morning, Commissioners. Randy Search at Lee County DOT. This item uh, executes the funding agreement with FDOT, enables the county to receive $5 million in construction funding for the upcoming Littleton Widening Project. We're about done with the design. We anticipate the job being constructed from the west to the east. We have a couple more properties to uh, secure along that route there to the east, but the, we should be ready to go early next year. I'll move approval, Mr. Chairman. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Um, any public comment? Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Any other discussion? Seeing none, any opposition? Seeing none, motion carries unanimously. I'll now move on to the public hearing. Good morning, Commissioners. David Halverson with the County Attorney's Office. I have your first three public hearings this morning. I'm providing the affidavits of publication to the clerk. Item number one this morning is a petition to vacate the public's interest in the unimproved public utility easement lying along the north lot line of a platted lot located at 6501 Jacobs Drive in Fort Myers. If there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Mr. Chairman, seeing no objections from the public utility providers, um, I'll go ahead and move the item for approval. I'll second it. A motion and a second. Any public comment? Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Any other discussion? Hearing none, any opposition? Hearing none, motion carries unanimously. Number two, please. Item number two is also a petition to vacate the public's interest in unimproved public utility and drainage easements centered along the common property lot line between lot six and seven of the platted lots at 1310 Olivet Street and Lehigh Acres. If there are any questions available? I'll move the item for approval, Mr. Chairman. I'll second it. Motion and a second on the floor. Any public comment? I'll close public comment. Any other discussion? Any opposition? Hearing none, motion carries unanimously. Item number three. Item number three this morning is also a petition to vacate the public's interest in the unimproved public utility and drainage easement centered along the common property lot line between lots two and three of the platted lots at 307 Bradley Avenue in Lehigh Acres. Are there any questions? I'm available. I'll move approval, Mr. Chairman. I'll second it. Motion is second on the floor. Any public comment? See none, I'll close public comment. Any other discussion? Any opposition? Hearing none, motion carries unanimously. I'll move on to item number four. Morning, Commissioners. Joe Adams with the County Attorney's Office. <clears throat> I have your fourth public hearing. Uh, this public hearing has been properly advertised, and I have the affidavit publication for your clerk. Uh, this is a hearing to approve the elimination of Bus Route 160, which services Pine Island. Um, staff is recommending elimination of the route due to a severe lack of ridership and the avail availability of enhanced ser services through the Transportation for the Disadvantaged program. Um, if there's any questions, Robert Cody is here to, to answer those, or I can attempt to answer the questions as well. Any questions? I move the item. I'll second it, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion and a second. Any public comment? See none, I'll close public comment. Any other discussion? I just want to say um, thank you for staff working. This is back, um, this brings back some memories. Back in 2013, we had brought this forward, um, staff had brought this forward, and it, it fell as far as dropping it. We actually had, I think, least ridership then in 12 and 13 and then it went up a little bit obviously in 18 you can see but then it's gone down again so it's this lack of ridership and the cost is just, you know i'm sure in the future we can look at some of the pilot programs like we're doing at bonita but um thank you for staff working on this try to improve the services yeah and mr chairman just to put on the on the record one of the things i learned in my briefing too was you know with our transportation disadvantage service and, and other programs that we have available we're able to accommodate the, the folks who are currently using this route and uh, if you know if you're interested mr cody i'm sure could fill you in on that but 
it was good to learn in my briefing that it doesn't seem like we're going to leave anybody hanging uh, by making this change. Any other discussion? Any opposition? Hearing none, motion carries unanimously. <coughs> Number five. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning. Uh, uh, item number five, public hearing number five, is a um, to asking you to consider 2020 census data redistricting alternatives for today. Uh, the Mr. Salyer will present the item, and uh, with the help of um, Mr. Wesh. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, Glenn Salyer, County Manager's Office. The maps that we are going to look at today, of course, have been published along with the redistricting report for almost two weeks. Uh, we did set up the East Room here today so that uh, members of the public could physically view those maps along with corresponding demographic data, asked uh, questions of technical staff, et cetera. So I'm going to move this uh, pretty quickly, through it pretty quickly. Please stop me at any point if you want to discuss. Uh, our general overview, we're doing this, of course, because uh, state law requires that we examine the need to redistrict after every decennial census. Uh, the redistricting process of itself is governed by uh, federal, state, and in the case of our charter, local law. The primary criteria that you use for redistricting are listed on this slide. I just note that the, the uh, main objective, of course, is to equalize population distribution throughout the five districts. And then the rest of these criteria, you need to balance one against another. We'll never produce a perfect map that uh, satisfies what you'd want to see in every one of these areas. But of course, you trade off and, and do the best that you can. And the, the maps that we'll present to you today do, do comply with all of the uh, criteria. So just stepping back for a second, you looked at this in a previous meeting, but the 2020 census data shows continued phenomenal growth in our county, pretty much 23% uh, population growth over the last decade. But you can see that it is uneven, and the growth listed by district there to the right points out the need to adjust our boundaries to equalize that population. This is your current district map, and it is overlaid with the 2010 and 2020 populations. Again, you've, you've looked at this at a prior meeting, and this is our starting point. Again, a slide you've seen before. It just shows how far away we are in each district from our target population of a little over 152,000. Uh, we're, we're really not that far off, but nonetheless, farther, farther than we want to be, so uh, we do want to adjust these district boundaries accordingly. Uh, this map shows alternative one along with demographic breakdown for racial and ethnicity data. Um, I'm going to, I'm not going to linger on this because it's a little hard to read and all of this information was in the report. We just wanted this to be part of the presentation for people who are viewing it online. I'm going to go instead, I'm gonna focus on the second map for each alternative. And what you see is the current district boundaries outlined in blue. And then uh, you see a shaded area for each district so that you can see what the changes in fact would be. Alternative one is your most dramatic change in terms of geography, meaning the number of square miles that would move to different districts is largest for this alternative. A little over 112 square miles would change. Moving to your second alternative, much smaller changes, closer to 15 square miles, just rounds out uh, a few areas that we need to equalize that population. Alternative three is the second largest change in terms of square miles. You can see it's almost 93 square miles that would change. This is the concept of uh, keeping the city of Fort Myers in a single district to the south of the river. That would be district two. Alternative four, again, is uh, fairly 
small changes just meant to better equalize population and conform to major physical features in terms of district boundaries. And then your fifth alternative is the smallest change of all at a little less than 14 square miles. I would note that of the alternatives posed, this is statistically the closest to equalization of uh, distribution across, across the board. As a reminder, this is your first of a series of public hearings. Uh, we want to get the board's direction today so that we can come back on November 2nd with maps that you all would uh, consider and, and hopefully coalesce around uh, uh, an, an alternative so that you then could adopt said map on November 16th. That would allow you to then certify the maps and the entire redistricting package for transmission to the Secretary of State on December 7th, which allows us to wrap up this process within an odd numbered calendar year, which is required by state law. And so that's it for the presentation commissioners. We're asking today uh, for discussion and direction. It, perhaps you have a preferred alternative or you'd like to see variations on one or more of the themes that we looked at. Uh, if there's additional information you need that goes beyond the redistricting report, obviously we'll get that for you, um, however you want to go. And so uh, if there are any questions, I'll, I'll field those before public comment and come back afterwards. I guess my first question would be for the county attorney. Um, so the process we're going through, I'm just reliving what I talked about before. So some people are still kind of confused on the whole process. Um, this does not change the way elections are held in Lee County. It does not change the, the way votes are counted as far as representation, correct? Because since we are, we're at large, that's something it keeps staying out of the story. We're at large, the current seats are. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir, please. Uh, yes, sir, and, and I believe part of the discussion and perhaps miscommunication in, in the general public is focused on the issue that you just highlighted. Commissioners, this is redistricting as required by the decennial census, state constitution, and state law. This is not a charter amendment to go to single member districts. This has nothing to do uh, with amending our charter or the manner in which county commissioners will be elected. Following this process, you will be continue to be elected and run countywide. And the other agency, or the other government agencies throughout the county choose to, to, to copy our maps, say school board, hospital board, and stuff like that. That's their choice to do that. Or they can elect to do their own maps based upon their own representation of their board, correct? Mr. Chairman? Once again, as independent government bodies, take for instance the school board, uh, the school board is free to conduct their own process similar to what you're being exposed to here and come to a different conclusion. They are free to adopt their own maps for redistricting purposes or they can follow your maps, um, but the decision lies with the school board uh, and it lies with the school board solely. You do not have any control, say, or the ability to direct the school board in their deliberations nor their final decision. Thank you. Any other questions? <clears throat> Might be some more after the public comment. I have quite a few questions. Yes, sir. Um, my first public uh, speaker is Frederick Morgan. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Frederick Dunbar Morgan II. My wife and I, we own our home in Cape Coral. However, I grew up in the Dunbar community where many of my relatives continue to live. Aunts, uncles, cousins, and even my mother, Mrs. Melvin Smallwood Morgan, continues to live there. In 1983, Governor Bob Graham appointed my mother, my then 46-year-old mother, Melvin Morgan to be the first African American to serve on this Lee County Commission. A feat that I was very proud of my mother. Brains and beauty and a neat balance is what was said about her. I served Edison College as the admissions counselor and recruiting co uh, coordinator. Recruiting at-risk students to get in college, stay in college and graduate and go on to lead a productive life in our Lee County community. I'm testifying on why the 2021 redistricting process needs to be fair and transparent. 
The drawing of maps will determine the allocation of the political power and representation at every level of government. In recent years, many communities across Florida and America recognize that if having racially diverse city councils, school boards, and county commissioners was the goal, then changes needed to be made. We, the NAACP, reject all five of the proposed maps as discriminatory. We propose the joining of Lehigh Acres and Metropolitan Fort Myers together to create what is already there, a collaboration, a coalition majority minority district. As reported by the news press, white residents in Lee and Collier counties declined by from 83% in 2010 to 69%, while the percentage of multiracial residents jumped from 2% to 13% during that same time frame. I strongly encourage you to consider adopting a map and not breaking up Dunbar that is fair and representative of the citizens who live there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mike Love. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Mike Love. I'm the director of economic development for the Lee County NWACP. Unlike what I heard on the radio this morning, redistricting is not rebalancing. Rebalancing gives us five maps that are similar, slightly deviated, and maintenance of 152,000. The NWACP would like to see the law followed where the words such as contiguity and community of interest is paramount. The 1964 Civil Rights Acts and the subsequent clarifying cases does not talk about rebalancing. Also, on page six of your document online, it talks about, in quotation, geographical compact, potential cohesive constituents, 60 to 65% of the total population. There's no footnote. There's no legal reference. How do we know you're not taking these figures out of context? Further on the radio this morning, I heard about minority majority and talk about Dunbar as it as if it is a negative. No. Dunbar is not a negative. Dunbar is part of metropolitan Fort Myers. In fact, minority majority does mean to elect a minority. It means to choose the representative that most represent your interests. The NWACP will participate with the process. We have, our lawyers have written, the lawyer for the commissioners, it's our intention to follow the process, to follow the legal steps that have been established so that there might be representation that best support the interests of minorities in Lee County. Thank you. Thank you. Hugh Stearns. Good morning. <clears throat> I'm Hugh Starnes, lifelong res resident of Fort Myers and Lee County. I think for you to make your decisions on the districts, there's an underlying concept that needs to be strongly considered. It's the history of treatment of black people in Lee County. 
The original name for the Dunbar community was Safety Hill. It became an area where all black residents were required to live. I don't believe there's any other such area in Lee County. Although there are some references to it being an area safe from flooding, one can easily imagine the real meaning. Stay in your area, particularly after dark, or you won't be safe. And why? A lynching in 1924 took place in Fort Myers. Two black teenagers. The sheriff had one in jail and was overpowered and a mob took him out of jail and hung him. The other boy was hunted down and at four something a.m. in the morning was taken and also lynched. There are other gory details that I will not include this morning. In the 1960s, the school board of Lee County fought desegregation for years. At one point, they had a 12-year plan to integrate the schools, one grade at a time. Any elected black commissioners? Melvin Morgan. But she was appointed by Governor Graham, not elected. Credit goes to Commissioner Frank Mann, who suggested the appointment to Governor Bob Graham at the time, who accepted that suggestion. At the time, Frank Mann was not a commissioner. In 1972, Judge Lamar Rose, whose strong belief in the death penalty earned him the title, the hanging judge, stood in front of this courthouse and under the old oak tree threw a rope over the tree with the statement, maybe we should go back to public hangings. The US Supreme Court had just overturned a ban on capital punishment. The news press published a photo of the stage incident. I dare say, I add, that any of the black community members would have thought he was referring to public hanging of a white person. Racist rant in Buckingham earlier this year was recorded on NBC2 video in which a woman used the N-word repeatedly during the course of the video. The incident involved a black business, moving business owner who was moving heavy barn materials uh, for an entrepreneur who had recently moved here from Hawaii to start an organic farm. Sir, if you could wrap up, your three minutes are up. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. If you could wrap up, your three minutes are up, the red light's on. Okay. The entrepreneur and the black mover each moved away after this incident. The Board of County Commissioners has this portrait. It's been requested many times to remove it and there's really been no response. I sat as a judge right over there in this courtroom. I would have been called down for ethical violations to have a portrait like that in the courtroom. So today, five white man, men sit as our commissioners, and I'm almost finished, elected in an at-large countywide election, even though we have five geographic commission districts with each one living, having the responsibility to live in it and have responsibility for that district. As a lawyer and a former judge, it's very difficult to understand the logic of that process. Could it be that historically there's a connection between that process and all the foregoing occurrences. Unfortunately, you may have to answer that question in court someday. This is an embarrassing history. As leaders of our county, each of you have a duty to try to correct it. Thank you. Madeline Stewart. Good morning, I'm Madeline Stewart. I'm here today with a number 
of Lee County voters who are part of a much larger group who aren't able to attend. We have been working to open up the redistricting process to make the process fair, equitable, and transparent, to give the voters an opportunity to share their views and make them known to you and to each other. You and your staff have heard my questions and concerns many times. Instead of speaking for myself today, I'm going to read a letter from Charlie Green. Charlie Green, as you all know, was elected clerk of the Lee County Courts for 27 years. Charlie is well known and well respected by voters throughout Lee County. He was born here and he has lived here his entire life and he knows the county well. Charlie's letter was sent via e-comment to, to you all on October 4th, but I have his permission to share this with everyone in the audience and who's listening online, so it will go into the public record. Here's Charlie's letter. I had hoped to be at tomorrow's commission meeting, but I am unable to. I am hopeful that the commission will utilize the help of a citizens committee to draw the district lines for the coming 10 years. I believe in today's environment, bringing more people into play on major issues provides all parties with an opportunity to learn from each other while being able to express their views. It is a great chance for Lee County to show a willingness to have an open dialogue with citizens who want to participate. Sincerely, Charlie Green. We wanted everybody to be aware of the e-comments because that's one way that we can actually learn from each other. Unfortunately, only you see those e-comments. The general public does not have an opportunity to see those. By reading this statement, I am reaching out, as Charlie suggests, so we have an opportunity to hear from and learn from each other and from those who are not able to be here today. I hope you will take his words to heart and allow a diverse citizens committee to collaborate in the process. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sonny Lerner. Good morning, gentlemen. My name is Sonny Lerner, and I had written an email to you which I'm going to read. Gentlemen, I'm appealing to you to consider all people within our beloved county. We've seen extraordinary growth here in the last decade, and redistricting ought to reflect the diversity of our population so that all are fairly represented. If only the redistricting process could consist of independent, qualified people, there would be more trust in the commission Based on previous history, there's skepticism that political decisions will override demographics. I'm pleased that you've agreed to a meeting on November 2nd, and I truly hope that impartiality will result for all of the residents of Lee County. Thank you for allowing me to speak my mind. Thank you. Wang Giddens. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. First of all, I am not here as an elected official. My badge is in my purse. I'm not here as a school board member. I'm here as Gwen Gittens, a resident of District 5. And I want to just make sure to mention the equity of future growth versus current need. And as we look at the maps well, I'll get to that in one second. We worked really, really hard to increase the numbers 
of ex the census this year, especially in the East Zone in District 5. And I was proud to see that it was up by 27%, but there were many, many more that were not reached. From Daniels to Alico Road and to the county line is future growth. When you look on your maps, there's nothing there right now. There's no roads, no houses or anything. But the number that shows for that area will change within the next, say, three to five years. Your maps will last for 10 years. So at some point, the growth between Daniels, Alico Road to the county line, Alico Road over to uh, Ben C. Pratt is growing expeditiously. And if that area, as it grows, is included in District 5, well, in another district actually, and not 5, the existing areas will be overshadowed. Because the dem think about the demographics and the new housing and all that is going in. De development is going to change the look of those maps within three to five years. And I'm just asking that you please consider um, not just the equity, let's say, of future growth versus current need. Uh, the area that I live in, we are in need of uh, infrastructure, roads, lights, all those things, and I know we're working on it, but it could be easily overshadowed if everyone's focus is on the new as opposed to what is existing and the needs that are here. So I ask that you consider that when you're choosing your maps. Thank you. Bobby D'Alessandro. Good morning, Commissioners. I'm Bobby D'Alessandro, a private citizen here for over 75 years, former school superintendent, who during my superintendency, we became a unitary school district, which meant we had removed all the vestiges of segregation, and it continues today. You know, public input on important issues is so important during this time of our life, especially important. And I know that you, like me, think this is very important. So I strongly urge you to immediately form a diverse citizen advisory committee to give input to you on this very important issue. I commend Franklin Mann for, Commissioner Mann, who is not here today, for bringing a small group together to have this input. But shouldn't this be a collaborative effort of all of you for the good of this district? My only advice to you is please, just do it. Thank you. Any other public comments? Yes, ma'am. Yes, good morning again. My name is Jasmine Miller, JD. Thank you for sending me to live in Dunbar. May Jehovah bless that place. Thank you. Any other public comments? Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Bring it back up to the commission. Gentlemen, what's our thoughts? Uh, I have a question that came up during one of the public comments. Um, it's for the county attorney. So th the term was used for us being responsible for our districts. I remember when I first ran for office, I remember actually a couple of judge friends of mine who was running at the same time. Uh, we looked at what was a, we expected us as candidates, also looked at what the job description was for the county. I've read the county administrative code, the county the county charter and it clearly states our responsibilities are county-wide it's not responsible for one district and the way i remember the way the code was written was our responsibilities to live within that district geographically correct mr chairman yes. yes sir pursuant to the charter you must live within the district in which you are elected however you serve the needs of the county county-wide without regard to district boundaries and our voting power and our response to Re residences countywide, not restricted to responsible just for a district, correct? Absolutely not. You are elected countywide. You have countywide responsibility. Your role as a county commissioner does not end at your district boundary. And I understand because I know a lot of people move here from other areas out of state and whatever, and other counties, for example, Cary County is single member districts where Lee County is not. So I understand how somebody can be confused based upon the responsibility. I have 
people that say, oh, I don't live in your district, so I need to call the, who's my district commissioner. So I understand, I just have to, it's hard to just want to explain and get that across to everyone that, to understand that's the responsibility is based upon geographically we have to live within that district to hold that seat. For example, uh, I, as a resident of Lee County, if I have an issue, I have the ability to call all five county commissioners regarding that issue. I'm not limited to calling the county commissioner that lives and serves the district in which I live. I have the ability to call all five of you. Great, thank you. <clears throat> you know, Mr. Chairman, I guess I'll ask some questions that I had. Uh, to our staff. Uh, real quickly, um, Mr. DeGelay, what what is the process for the public to provide any amendments to the five maps that we've put forward, or, or do they also have a process to uh, submit their own maps if they wanted to? Mr. Taylor? Thank you. Yes, Commissioner Hammond, the easiest way for the public to submit maps is 5 2021 redistricting email address. Uh, as you know, the county has created a dedicated web page for this process. On that web page is a, a way to contact us. And so the easiest way to do it would be simply to email the map and supporting uh, data and information to us. So we have that email address set up. Um, is there any format that you want that in? Could it be as simple as if they sketched on a map? Or wh wh what are you looking for? It could be as simple as that uh, to realistically assess whether or not it's a viable opportunity we would need to be able to ascertain what the boundaries being proposed are because we do need to go by census geography down to the block level. So there has to be a little bit of specificity there. Uh, ideally, they would submit the accompanying demographic data that corresponds to their map. Uh, you know, that said, we'll, we'll try to work with, with anything that we can. Okay. So we are, it sounds like we're definitely we are able to consider more than these five alternatives that have been put forward, though. We're not locked into these five. It's really at the board's uh, behest, Commissioner. Whatever you direct us to consider is what staff will analyze. Okay. And then um, I, guess, I guess that's what I, you know, what I was going to talk about and ask about. You know, one, one thing, you know, for folks in the public, if, if they're interested in the Florida redistricting.gov has also put together the ability to... Um, draw maps and fill in things with census tracts. Uh, it's part of the statewide's redistricting, uh, state's redistricting efforts too. I found that tool to be helpful. Um, so, you know, that, that's out there as well to try and help from folks. Um, commissioners, I, I think at this point, I think it would definitely be premature for us to leave today with any kind of preferred alternative. I think, you know, with our uh, after hours public hearing coming up, uh, that's gonna be November 2nd at 6 p.m. It'll give a lot of folks who maybe were at work today and unable to attend a chance to come and give us uh, public input directly. I, I'd like to leave as many options open going into that so that we can get a full uh, complement of, of public input. And um, I think that that's, concludes my comments. Um, for example, in my briefings this week with staff, I actually presented a map. I've changed some lines on it, incorporated the city of Fort Myers, kind of like the, I think somebody from the NAACP mentioned, the city of Fort Myers Dunbar area being incorporated in District 5. Um, I think that was a prior map before 2010. This is to see what those numbers come out to be. So I'm not sure. I've not got a response back yet. What the numbers would be, they have to calculate. You have to move the line. Every time you move a line, it, it affects the whole county. So I understand it's a process we have to go through. But I think um, that, one, that was my question. Does this motion that was requested today, does that limit us to only those five maps or not? So maybe the county, would that be the county attorney or the county manager that would be able to respond? Would we only limit it to only five or like those other options? Uh, no, sir. Still <clears throat> uh, no, sir. These are the five that we have, um, that we have authored based on the criteria as we understand it. Uh, but as county commission, you can instruct us to create any other iterations of this map as you see fit. We can also take into consideration maps that may be, um, uh, that may be given to us by any of the um, interested parties or interested um, organizations. And we're happy to um, present all of that to you at our next public hearing. Great. Thank you. Right. I would agree. I, um, I think we all need to take, just sit down, think through this, see what questions we have, see what questions our constituents have. But I want to go back to something that uh, Commissioner Pendergrass said. Um, I was appointed the first time by the governor, and of course, then ran in 2020. Um, I think the ability for me to go out into all the districts uh, was probably an education to itself. 
gave me a chance to meet a lot of people locally, talk about the nuances of each of the districts. Um, and I th <coughs> think what was good for me is that when I think of Lee County, I think holistically. What is good for Lee County holistically? Um, not just my little patch of the world and stuff like that. So it was informative to me. I'm sure that I'll continue to learn from that. But I want to thank everybody in each of those districts that took the time to sit down with me, talk with me, uh, and learn the nuances of each of those. Because uh, I think not only do we have to think holistically for Lee County, but as you know, we're doing more with Charlotte County, we're doing more with Collier County. Southwest Florida is, is not the boundaries of our county. And so how we operate collectively will be our future. I mean, I agree with my colleagues. Um, I've served for 15 years and I've served um, at large. I did run um, in the last election, uh, started February, almost two years before the election. So really got out and someone that came from a small island called Sanibel um, with about 4,000 people that vote, I certainly knew what it was to go out and knock on doors and try to get to the community and talk about what, um, what their issues were. I've always listened, um, I worked for uh, my entire uh, government career. Um, predominantly, most of it was a, as a volunteer, was what we did. So working at large is what I've been accustomed to, and I, I certainly believe that makes uh, the most sense. Um, the emails, I can assure you, as being a new person on the block, but the new chairman, um, are numerous in, in, in volume. Um, public records, um, you know, I know a speaker mentioned about emails aren't public record. Um, I can assure you the number of public record requests I've had in a short period of time I've been involved, they are. We fill out logs, we go to great lengths to try to make sure we're as transparent as humanly possible and I wanna to continue to hear from you. Um, additionally, you know, there's 67 counties here in, in, Lee County, in, in Florida, I do apologize. And, and less than 10% have actually um, formed, if, if I'm stating anything incorrectly, Mr. Saylor, please, Correct me, but less than 10% of those counties have actually formed such a citizen advisory. So the majority of the counties out there have not formed such a committee, correct? Yes, sir, we've only been able to identify six uh, out of all 67 thus far. You know, and, and we're all very much engaged in the Florida League of Counties. There's a 19 county coalition. We talk to very members of people and I'm certainly gonna keep an open mind, but it certainly appears the majority of people are not there from that point of view. Um, to date, um, I appreciate the six speakers. Um, it, I probably received less than a dozen emails. Um, I certainly wanna hear from the public, but uh, the majority of the public um, that I've met over the last two years have certainly reached out and um, I've listened to them as well. Um, people think we're going through a process that they respect. People think we're going through a process that certainly seems to be as transparent as we can, we'll continue to do so. So I do agree with all my colleagues I think it's premature to come to a conclusion. Um, and you know we do ask the public to continue to uh, be engaged and, and let us know what you want. But so far, considering that you know having run in this election and having some 760,000 people, there's about a dozen emails and about a half a dozen people and maybe three or four at the last meeting that have weighed in. So um, that's a really small percentage of the people that have actually come and weighed in on this so far. Uh, my email is open. I can assure you I get uh, emails. We do respond um, as all the other commissioners. But I think we need to continue to be open. Um, I'm not in a position to adopt any uh, alternatives today, and I agree with Commissioner Hammond. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if I may throw out uh, something for discussion, um, you know, I, I know there's been a suggestion in many of the emails and even today from some of the speakers about drawing another map that would combine uh, the Dunbar area with parts of Lehigh Acres. Uh, is, is it possible, do you wanna see an alternative, like maybe a sixth map before we get to that uh, six o'clock public hearing on November 2nd um, with that alternative, if our staff could kind of go? Because I was, I was really uh, pleased looking at the five alternatives. When we first began getting public comment uh, about a month or so ago, um, one of the initial alternatives brought forward was, you know, could you, could you move uh, Dunbar out of District 4 um, because they wanted to fold in with Fort Myers, they thought that was a more like-minded community. And, um, and so alternative three does that. It pushes district four completely north of the river and then, and then does that. So it kind of was, I thought the staff was actually really responsive to what we heard in some of the early public comment, but now it seems like there's a different alternative being asked for that could be combining Dunbar with, with uh, more of Lehigh and district five. So 
I just thought, it, you know, I'm open to seeing that map before we get to that public hearing and wanted to see if, if you all were too. Um, so my request was how that changed the numbers. You call obviously the city from where there was a Dunbar area and the urban area, it's more density compared to Northern Lee County by Charlotte County, for example, where District 5 goes up to. So that's my question was how that changed the geographic areas of the district based upon the population. So I'm, I'm open, that's why I was speaking earlier, saying to see what those numbers come back. But again, it may, I think the ratio is gonna be the same probably. Um, we break down kind of like currently District 2 and District 4 prior to the chip map changes, it's the same ratio between races. So I'm, I'm always open to that to see what that map comes forward with. So with that, I guess um, I'll, I'll make a motion. Uh, Mr. County Attorney, help me out with what we need for a motion here, but I'll make a motion that we bring these alternatives forward to the next public hearing, uh, along with maybe one more alternative that accomplishes that goal of trying to create that uh, Dunbar, Lehigh Acres, uh, map so that we can have a look at it at the next public hearing as well. Is that an appropriate motion for today's public hearing, uh, Mr. County Attorney? Mr. Chairman, when you say look at it as well, I presume that would also include the same type of staff analysis as to the other factors to be considered in redistricting, correct? That, that would be my desire, yeah. Perfect. Thank you. And, uh, Mr. Chair? Um, uh, Ask for some indulgence here. Could you give us about a three-minute recess? I'd like to uh, consult with staff, and make sure that we get the get this right because today is, in fact, your day to give us some additional instruction uh, regarding maps that you may want to see. And I want to make sure that we don't uh, inadvertently preclude uh, any other options that you may decide you want to see. Um, so, you know, if you just we, if if you don't mind, Commissioner, absolutely, Mr. Well. Chair. Just a just a three minute recess. A quick recess. Thank you.
I ask everybody to sit down? We could reconvene our Board of County Commissioners meeting October 5th, 2021. We were on item number five. Staff had asked for an indulgence. Granted. Thank you, Mr. You're Chair. Up, Mr. Uh, we, we appreciate the, uh, the few minutes there to, to discuss the item, and I'm going to defer to the county attorney to um, present our conversation. Mr. Chairman, board members, just for clarification purposes on the motion, we understood that specific direction uh, of the commissioner that made the motion and seconded, but we also understand that that was not meant to limit in any way our consideration of information that may be received by us from the public. Right. Now, we would respectfully request that the public, if they're going to submit anything to us, that they do so by October 15th so that we can then put together an agenda item for your consideration on October 19th uh, and insert the 19th into the process. That would be an administrative agenda item the public would have the right to address just as they would uh, at any one of your board meetings, but we want to make it clear that the purpose of your motion is to not exclude the county staff from acting or reacting or analyzing any public information that we may receive between now and then. Likewise, Commissioner Pendergrass had discussed um, asking staff to take a look at some modifications. We would anticipate that that request is likewise not excluded by your motion and would move accordingly and provide that information to you for consideration at your October 19th meeting. Uh, as long as that's everybody's understanding. Yeah, I sure. apologize for the long-windedness. Oh. Uh, so, you know, and, and definitely I will, I will appreciate any help in making sure we craft the motion as articulately as possible. But uh, yeah, my, my intention and desire was, I see we have five maps in front of us. Five seem to be a rather arbitrary number. I don't know why we had five or three or whatever. And I thought if people are asking to see a sixth alternative, well then let's, let's bring the sixth alternative forward as well, as well as any other public comment. That's the reason why we have public hearings. I, I, wanna, I don't wanna preclude anything at this point. I guess I was trying to open it up to more. Uh, at this Understood, point. just wanted to be clear that your motion was by identification, not limitation. Yeah, okay, that, that makes right. sense. Uh, oh, okay. okay, go ahead. Chairman, if I could ask a question to the county attorney. So our motion today and what we're in this agenda item is legal and sufficient based upon what we advertised today. And why I'm saying that is because we've heard comments earlier that it's unfortunate people want to go that way. They want to have their attorneys contact us. We'll be hearing from their attorneys. So I'm making sure that what we're doing legally based upon redistricting within the state guidelines and federal guidelines of Lee County, this is legal and sufficient. We have no legal concerns with regard to Lee County's process to date. And to the extent any party would like their attorney to correspond with our office, uh, everybody knows where they can find us. We'd be happy to respond and have responded. And under our county, current county charter and our districting, redistricting, are we limited and are we procurely from state or federal guidelines based upon that in some ways? Uh, no, sir. The alternatives that are presented to you take into account the provisions of the county charter, state law, federal law, as well as state and federal case law. Thank you. One other indulgence. Um, it was brought to my attention that the maps that are out there for viewing are much more comprehensive than our website. You can't get the level of detail necessary. So whatever we can do to make sure they're as close to being transparent as one another, I think it's really important to identify those. Yes, sir. Um, if we could do that, that was great input and try to do that as much as possible. And whether additional information we can get out to the public, media is here, TV, I know they want to interview us after. I want people to be very engaged in this process. Um, some people are concerned that there's not as many people, or there's many more people engaged. I encourage people to write emails, write whatever you can, but whatever we can do to make sure this is as robust a notification as possible. Yes, sir. Including the maps, that would be great. I have a motion. I have a second on the floor. Mr. Any? Chairman, could yes. we state, have our county attorney you have a second? Huh? I, don't, I do not believe you have a second to that. Okay. Uh, you you want to restate it just for the record, Mr. Commissioner <laughs> Hammond? Um, How much time do you have, Commissioners? Um, <laughs> yes, that staff is directed to prepare at a minimum a map six as identified by Commissioner Hammond within the parameters identified by Commissioner Hammond. 
In doing so, however, we are not precluded from reacting to any public information or submissions that are presented to us, including um, Commissioner Pendergrass's request for additional analysis voiced today. Uh, that public submissions of information should be, su should be submitted by October 15th of uh, this year, and then we will present that further analysis to you in an administrative agenda item at your meeting on October 19th. That sounds like my motion. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Yes, sir. Uh, motion on the floor. Uh, I have a second. Um, any other additional public comment? None. I'll close that. Any other discussion? Any opposition? Staff has the direction. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate the motion carried unanimously. Um, walk on items. Um, I actually um, do have a walk on item. I wanted to bring it to the board's attention. Um, it's called Risk Rating 2.0. It's relative to flood insurance. Uh, many years ago, back in 2013, 2014, I had the privilege with several of the mayors and, and former Commissioner Kiker to go to Washington to talk about a bill called Bigot Waters. Um, at the point in time, there was going to be considerable pressure put on the local real estate economy relative to flood that was proposed increases from 100% to thousands of percent. Uh, we went to Washington and were able to talk about the inequity and more importantly, the actuary um, um, studies that they did were inadequate, uh, weren't viable, had many flaws within them. Um, 2019, FEMA decided to take a thing called Risk Rating 2.0. Um, the Trump administration had deferred this. Um, it expired uh, October 1st, and really what it does is it really ignores flood maps, uh, flood elevation certificates, I should say. What it is is looks at your maps uh, in general, and it seems to arbitrarily penalize people who have never had a flood policy. So new construction, um, any tear down construction, any homes as they change hands uh, where they may not have had flood policies in the past. Flood policies are issued by the federal government. You can assume them, you can transfer them. Um, and what this provision has is inside the actual 2.0 indicates that flood cannot go up more than 18% a year. So if you have a flood policy, you're kind of covered. If you're not, it's going to be cr uh, creating great havoc. Uh, personally, um, you know, I experienced this. Um, my youngest son, Kevin, was purchasing a home in Cape Coral um, off of Skyline. Um, and uh, we estimated a very modest premium for flood insurance. And unfortunately, his flood came in at $4,000. And now he's in the process of potentially not qualifying for the mortgage. When you estimate a payment of $120 and it comes in closer to $400 for escrows, many first-time home buyers, affordable housing we're talking about, all those opportunities are going to certainly be in peril, in harm's way, because people just don't have an extra couple of $300. And that's just one example, his moderate home, off of Skyline, inland, no canal nearby, that was the premium. I've had many, many different people come and uh, come up to me because we went through this situation once before. Back in 2014, you know, the sad thing is when it's all uh, covered by the government, federal government, it encompasses 50 states. And the way this is run is not like a normal insurance company having grown up in that world and served um, for a major um, insurance company uh, for the first almost 15 years of my life. Normally you take premiums in, you have losses, you have a combined ratio and you pay it. The government does it a little bit differently. They recognize the revenue, but they take the premium of the claims out of a trust fund. And that trust fund has, uh, was a negative back in yesteryear. Florida contributed about $14 billion in premium, paid out about $2 billion in claims. So from an insurance company, that was a very profitable form of business. Unfortunately, when you start to put that together with 50 other states, as we determined back then, Louisiana, Texas, and many other states were obviously didn't have the same type of premium to loss ratios. Um, as a result, this has taken place. I suspect this is going to start to really blossom and bloom. I did heal from a uh, really a first-time home builder and someone that builds 
um, homes for affordable housing and in that small niche. I then heard from a second builder, I've heard from a third builder. This is definitely going to get in the way, first, of affordable housing. I don't see how it's not going to. Second, it's going to, as we change the demographic or we change the uh, age group within Lee County, you might have had a person that came here some 20 or 30 years ago, were uh, fortunate not to have a mortgage, didn't necessarily get flood insurance. Um, again, I have a family member that did that as well, um, sold their home, and the new person had to come in and buy flood insurance. So those are the types of people that are going to be affected. Um, anyone that's in any of the AE or VE zones um, are certainly going to at least, at the, at the very least, go up by 18% if you have a flood policy. And that's going to be perpetual until they believe you've gotten to the premium that's actually sound. Um, I really don't know the actuary um, makeup of how they've come up with this because I still don't understand. I think the deficit um, in the trust fund is driving this. I wanted to bring to the county commissioner's um, attention. This was an issue that I certainly dealt with very painfully some seven years ago. Uh, we continue to kick the can down the road. It's now a new uh, process called Risk Rating 2.0. I included an executive version as part of the handout um, associated with this. But I wanted to bring it to everyone's attention. Um, the other challenge that we have, I've been reached out uh, by several uh, council members from Cape Coral. Um, I was reached out by one that wants to do a town hall type meeting in Cape Coral on the 12th. I said I'd be eager to participate. Uh, the concern right now is that trying to get um, our lobbyists to get the appropriate uh, appointments may be more challenging than in the past. In the past, we had um, various lobbyists from Fort Myers, from Sanibel, from Lee County, from Cape Coral, all work together in unity to try to get as many appointments as possible. Um, up in Washington right now, they're dealing with um, debt ceiling uh, uh, challenges. They're dealing with infrastructure bills that are in the trillions. There's just many other issues that certainly are taking the majority of the time. So um, I don't want to necessarily dilute the challenge we're going to have to try to get an appointment, to try to be effective and try to articulate what this is. Um, the examples are coming in daily, and the examples are pretty profound. Um, I'm also informed that this will have an impact on the commercial sector as well as the residential sector. Um, so it's relatively new. I just thought it would be a good idea to, uh, since we all don't have an opportunity to chat, I wanted to bring it to everyone's attention um, and, and, and just really um, bring it on the radar because this will be something we'll hear about. It's unfortunate that uh, the federal government did all that it did with PPP to try to prompt up an economy. I can assure you that this will do nothing to help our local economy. It'll put many sales in jeopardy. The one builder I was talking to, ironically enough, is building my son's home and lost about eight contracts in the last two weeks. Um, so those types of homes, I think, are going to be challenging because, again, um, it's everybody's dream to go afford a home and buy one. But uh, when escrow is changed you know, by several hundred dollars, you just don't have that type of flexibility in any type of budget. So. Um, I'll stop here. I just wanted to make sure that um, my colleagues understood what was at the situation at hand and, and as its evolution um, comes. I, you know, certainly been in contact with um, Representative Donald's office, so has um, some of the members from Cape Coral, um, to let them know this is a concern. Um, whatever we can do to delay this, at least maybe even for 90 days, might give us a better chance of um, having an opportunity to make your case in front of a, a legislator or someone at the Senate on the, on the D.C. side. At the moment, um, I just think they have their hands full with uh, more pressing matters. Mr. Chairman, thanks for bringing that up as well. Um, I, I've, I've had the pleasure of being appointed by uh, Florida Association of Counties President Ralph Thomas to the uh, federal uh, committee that the uh, Florida Association of Counties has, and I'm the vice chairman of the committee. I can assure you we've been talking about this as well on the committee, and uh, we'll, we'll carry your message forward there as well. This is like you said, uh, Chairman, it's just gone on since 2014, even beyond that, um, we dealt with this back then countywide, and it's unfortunate the flood maps have areas like you were referring to the skyline, an area that probably will never flood as long as your son lives there, and it's unfortunate these areas have been 
brought into the flood maps, but it's going to be a long discussion. It's just unfortunate, and I'm sure Commissioner Hammond, in his position, you'll see the on the federal level and state level how this will become a partisan issue, and we'll bring up the this the signal, the messaging for sea level rise and, and man-made climate change. So, this has a long. It's going to last until at least next year. It's unfortunate, but we deal with this every couple of terms. So, well, and well, Mr. Chairman, I, I think uh, you're spot on, and I think it's going to take something whether it's a delay, whatever, on a very broad base. Some of the stuff that I've read is talks about going down to individual properties and reassessing those, and as you can imagine, trying to get down to that level of granule stuff would take who knows how long. So I think uh, our ability to, to delay this for a portion would probably be the best move. But that's great that I brought it up. I had no idea, Commissioner Hammond, that you were as engaged as you are, and I'm delighted to hear it because I have a feeling that we're going to need all hands on deck. Um, I unfortunately uh, went through um, this back in yesteryear, and it, it had about a one in four impact on policies within Lee County. So uh, I don't know if it's going to be that severe because um, certainly the way to get around this is to, you know, when real estate changes hands, if there is a flood policy, you have the ability to assume that, um, and then you're locked into the 18 percent increase. But I'm very concerned, and we all have worked really hard for affordable housing, and uh, this could be a major obstacle in, in, in that process, um, and certainly for first-time home buyers um, as well. But um, we'll continue to uh, track it. I certainly look forward to any updates that you have. Commissioner Ham, I think it's great that um, you're engaged to the degree you are. I know there's certainly a lot of anxiety going around quickly, so I think we'll start to hear about this. I know I saw a uh, a news blast, and uh, I think it's just going to come out as the examples come out, and we're trying to get uh, those examples, and certainly the media um, ha has come and brought it to my attention and want to talk about it another time. So um, that's really the issue. I don't really want to elaborate much more. Uh, we all uh, understand what's, what's at stake as things come along. I'll funnel anything I get to the county manager so he can certainly f forward it all to you. Um, you know, in, in identifying what our, uh, our pool of uh, potential exposure is and what that looks like. But that was my walk-on item, and, and I just wanted to bring it to your attention as uh, uh, I thought it was noteworthy. Thank you. Um, with that in mind, we do have commissioner items. I have no commissioner item. I don't either. Uh, we have a commissioner appointing, appointments. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I'll, uh, I'd like to reappoint Amy Thibault to the Land Development Code Committee. One second. Thank you. Commissioner, I'm going to pass over to you. I do have one appointment, and I'm looking for it. I don't have it. Go ahead. Okay, I have one reappointment. Fitzroy Alexander to the Whiskey Creek Clubs Estates. I do. I have it. I have uh, Jamal Ma Lambert to the Community Action Agency. It's a reappointment. Moved item. Second. I'm sorry. We didn't do yours, Commissioner Hammond. We had a motion. We had a second. All in favor? Any public comment? Any opposition? Thanks. Um, we have a motion on the floor. You seconded. I appreciate that. Um, any opposition? Motion carries unanimously. Commissioner Pendergrass. Uh, Fitzroy Alexander to reappointment of Whiskey Creek Club Estates. I'll second that. Any opposition? Seeing none, motion carries unanimously. And I have one reappointment, Robert Peace, uh, to the uh, uh, Bell Isle Drive, Fort Myers, uh, for, let's see if the categories on here. Second. Thank you. Motion is second. Any opposition? Seeing none, motion carries unanimously. Um, County manager items. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I have no further information for you today. Sure. Any attorney items? Nothing further, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, I do have a few more cards for public comments. Um, Willie Joe Schottmeyer. He left. Okay. Thank you. Jasmine Miller. Thank you. And then I have Valdemir. Come on up, sir. Good morning. 
uh, commissioners, ladies and gentlemen, everybody who's uh, having the opportunity to watch us you know, online on TV. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and the time uh, I've been speaking before you guys. Uh, I was doing my devotional early in the morning when the, Holy, when the Holy Spirit brought me to Matthew chapter 6, verse 26. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into the barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? I really thank you uh, to all of you guys, uh, the city, the county, uh, the health system, and all these profit and non-profit organizations that have been working really close with the homeless community. I have been, I've been homeless for three years already. I'm 60 years old, but I've been working with my Lord for almost 28 years. You know, I just want to share my testimony with you, ladies and gentlemen, because all the hard work that you've been doing uh, in the city of Fort Myers and Lake County is not in vain. Uh, I've been clean for 25 years after being a drug addict, an alcoholic, smoking a lot, two packs a day, and doing you know, all kind of crazy things. And I really became a born again, spirit-filled Christian, but I never thought I would have ended a homeless. So I just want to remind you one of the things that the prophet of the Lord spoke a couple of years ago when he said, uh, I have a dream that someday we're gonna be working together like a partnering together shoulder to shoulder, each one of us. It doesn't matter your uh, background, your color, your cultural, your status, we're gonna be working like a family. The main reason I'm here is because I wanna share a praise report, a glory sighting of the revival that we are having the streets of uh, Fort Myers, Hidden Lake County. It was a couple of days ago when one of the homeless community got an overdose and he was rescued for a young African-American homeless and thanks God by the grace of God, he's alive. He saved that life, you know? Uh, I just want to thank you for, for all the hard effort, the hard work, the sacrifice that you're taking to do the best for the residents in the Lee County in Fort Myers. And I just want to thank you for all that, that this fire that is in my heart will be shared with you and to everybody, everywhere. Thank you so much for listening. May the Lord bless you. Thank you very much. Any other public comments? See none, I'll close public comment and I'll call for adjournment. Thank you all. <laughs>